Phillips Collection, a furniture company, but personally I'm less interested in the fact that they make furniture and more interested in the fact that they collect all these natural chunks of things like rocks and crystals and trees and wood and petrified wood, some sort of crossover episode between wood and rocks. And they collect all these things and one of the people that works and runs the place I was kind enough to invite me over to the warehouse to look around, poke around, feel around, and kind of glean and absorb some inspiration from the place. And it's just really cool. They go all over the world and just find all these things they can turn into furniture and sell to to wherever, I guess to whoever wants cool looking furniture. Um, I, I have like two pieces of furniture in my whole apartment. I have like a bed and a desk and one and a half chairs. I call a stool a half chair. But I really enjoyed looking at all these. It it really is like a natural line museum they had going on here. And all these trees, you know, like think trees, rocks, so many things sliced in half carefully, polished geodes of incredible size. I had no idea geodes could be so big. Uh, I really need to read up on it more, but apparently there's just rocks uh, lying around in fields in Brazil or something, and people just go around with sledgehammers, uh, and wh- maybe like one in every 500 rocks is a is a geode, so they just go and break them all open. Just go nuts, breaking them all all the rocks open, and they find geodes, and uh, and then they you know they make end tables out of them or just sell them as you know little corner pieces or center pieces, you know, and then there's these huge trees. I think they try to find trees that are already being cut down for other reasons, you know, kind of a, they're smart enough to go about it in a sustainable way so that they're not just cutting down whole forests. Like, I think it's clear to see most of these trees are big old trees that were uh, well on in their lives and uh, probably fell down due to storms or whatever. I don't know. It's not up to me or my concern really too much. I was just there running my hands and eyes very closely and intimately over things. And I did some sketches while I was there. Um, some of the sketches, it was one of the, have you ever done one of those sketches where you're looking at things and drawing, but looking at the thing more than you're looking at your paper? I think there's a name for that. I won't guess too much, but it's good. Your drawing ends up looking very messy, but also in a way kind of very honest and un- unfiltered. I think it's a good way to go about it sometimes. I like it. Hmm. So, the the, the lines between a... a, a, I'm stuttering, but I was just thinking that a a geode and a tree sliced in half don't share a whole lot of lines. But then I was looking at the, the outside portion of a geode and then they have rings around them too. And then there's rings in all sorts of natural things. There's rings around the earth and its core and its crust. Rings around geodes, rings around trees. There's a ring on my finger. There's rings everywhere. Rings around Saturn. Right? That's the one with rings, I think. There's rings everywhere. Anyways, I gotta go draw some more now. Got all sorts of cool inspiration from these lines. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a good one.